Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the most influential urban conservative talk show in all of the world. It is the exceptional conservative show. Normally we come to you live from Washington, D.C., but guess what? We're coming to you live from the beautiful shores of Wilmington, North Carolina. What a wonderful, wonderful experience it has been for my wife and I, an opportunity to get away and to enjoy the fruits of our labors over the past few months. There is much we want to talk about tonight. Bill Cosby, of course, will be talking with uh, none other than our great friend when we release the Kraken at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Ralph Chittums will be joining us at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, none other than Shannon Wright will be joining us at 10.30 as we talk about Baltimore and its pursuit of a world record for killings. I don't know. I, somewhere in that area. Maybe I think Chicago's got them beat. Uh, and then, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to finish up. Uh, well, not really. Tomorrow we'll finish up. But tonight we'll move into part three of our conversation on U.S. immigration. We want you to know that it is an American privilege, not a universal right. You know what we do? Take our hand over our heart. We take our hats off. We get ready to do what we love doing most, and that's saying Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. Take it away, Senor Cabrera. Buenas tardes, niños. This is Spanish with Senora Cabrera. Today we will learn how to say the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish. In English, we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now in Spanish we say, Juro, fidelidad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la república que representa una nación bajo Dios, indivisible, con libertad y justicia para todos. Muy bien. Practice your pledge of allegiance. And the more you practice, the faster you will memorize it. And I will see you now. Thank you all so much for being with us uh, as we begin Wednesday night. And everybody knows uh, who's been listening to us over the years what Wednesday night is. Wednesday night is Sackheads Night. Sackheads Radio. S H R S H R Radio. Uh, at its most primate nature. Yes, yeah, Sackhead Sean, Sackhead Clint, and occasional. Uh, fixtures by the ever popular, ever handsome Socko, Free Socko, we always say. Uh, so glad to have uh, them on the card for this particular evening. I'm one of the undercards. Uh, you, you know, I, you have to, when you go to these boxing matches and you're paying four or $500 to see the card event, uh, I'm the undercard. I'm that lightweight guy who you will probably never hear from again, but I'll put up a good show. So, <laughs> uh, I'm getting word tonight, uh, this, this just in, uh, Sackheads will not be appearing tonight, probably have started uh, their Irish uh, celebration of the new year, or at least St. Patrick's Day starting tonight, so <laughs> they may not necessarily be in the best condition for a live show, but uh, nonetheless, Nonetheless, uh, tune in to SHR Radio when you have the opportunity. I am now the card for the evening, and I thank God um, <clears throat> for the opportunity of coming to you uh, live. You, you know, a lot of people believe that the biggest story of the day is the Cosby story, but I'm beginning to believe that the biggest story of the day is the Clinton story. How is it that Bill Cosby... Uh, literally loses uh, his fight uh, for freedom uh, and and as well he's lost money he's lost degrees he's lost all of that but Bill Clinton 
who literally was caught in the White House doing the thing for which Bill is accused of doing, uh, he gets billions of dollars in speaking engagements. Uh, he has a presidency almost in his hands again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. A lot of people keep talking to me about double standards, but I think we're watching one of the biggest double standards in the history of mankind. We'll see. I'll talk with Ralph Chittums about that at 10 p.m., and we'll see exactly what he has to say about that. I, I just think hey, we're, we're off the congregation here. We're off the reservation of the congregation. Um, but I digress. Tonight we're going to be talking about immigration. Tomorrow night we'll talk about immigration as well. We'll finish everything off. But I want to give you uh, an idea of how much individuals pay to get into this particular country. Uh, you know, according to the State Department, that a, a U.S. passport is worth at least $25,000 on the underground market. Getting a U.S. passport is worth $25,000. So literally literally there are people who are willing to pay a fortune to be in the United States of America and to be called a citizen for the United States we're also going to take a look at what the founding fathers considered regarding immigration uh, their open borders approach uh, <clears throat> uh, was challenged by the Civil War and we will actually see exactly why it was challenged and why we may need to return back. And I'm not, hey, when I say open borders, listen to what I say tonight. Listen to what I say in terms of configuring open borders. It is not what you hear in modern America. It's not what you think. We'll get into that in just a few. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we do. We play a couple of commercials. We come back. It is that time of the evening. We want to welcome you and thank you so much. I uh, also want to thank in our chat role this particular evening, um, Mary Brockman, my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me, you will be dismissed. Dan, the man butchers in the chat role. He's with High Plains Talk Radio. You need to get in contact with him if you want to start your own program. Uh, and Deborah Blair, thank you so much for coming. We love you. We thank you so much for all of you all being here. And most importantly, the beautiful, the brilliant. Mrs. Biggs is watching via Ustream. So we thank you so much for Ustream watchers, for live stream watchers, for High Plains Talk, SHR Media, uh, Rebooting Liberty. We want to thank all of you for promoting the Exceptional Conservative Show. Tonight we are live from Wilmington, North Carolina. Hi, my name is Christopher Arnold. I'm an executive chef with a big restaurant. And today I'm going to walk you through some of the meals that we prepare here. <laughs>
I'm not putting the word in the song, but it took on it to the beat that we love at. Yeah, I'm not Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time for you to do the most important thing you're going to do this particular week. It is to eat at Infused Restaurant. It is to order their food. Yes! 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland, 20748. Telephone number 301-449-9000. Infuseinfuse.com. Make it a part of your regular eating schedule. I uh, just want to come to you also on this particular night and talk with you about Stockings for Soldiers, Delaware Incorporated. Uh, our soldiers fight bravely overseas uh, and put up a great fight to protect our families here at home as well. Stockings for Soldiers, Delaware Incorporated was founded to help improve the morale and welfare of members of the armed forces of the United States of America deployed in harm's way. They accomplished that mission by sewing holiday stockings and filling them with special items for the troops. Many of the stockings that we or they send are for a specific person with the name of the stocking, securely signed into the stocking itself. For many troops, the gift is all that they receive for the holiday season. Listen, we they are trying to send a touch of home as well as personal messages of support to remind our troops that we appreciate all they do for us and to let them know that they have not been forgotten over the holidays. They depend on the generosity of others to help to accomplish that vital mission and you can help them as they are a 501c3 nonprofit organization and it may be beneficial to you. Stocking for Soldiers Delaware Incorporated does accept tax deductible gifts uh, to the extent allowed by law. Please consult your tax professional before you make your donation to make certain that it is tax deductible but even if you've reached that goal for yourself and your family this year send a check anyway five twenty five five hundred send a check your donation to the community project would be greatly appreciated and you might be asking yourself why am I still talking about this the holidays are over Ken well there's a holiday coming in 2016 and as well, there's still expenses left over from 2015. Won't you help? Stockings for Soldiers, Delaware Incorporated, 1911 Folk Road, F O U L K Road, Wilmington, Delaware, 19810. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I personally believe that there is no greater joy than experiencing being a citizen of the United States of America. I know many people will say, well, Ken, uh, I mean, you're slightly biased by all of that. I mean, you are an American citizen. And I think a aptly great one to tell you that this is a wonderful country. Uh, and as such, uh, we would love individuals to come into this particular country and be citizens of the United States of America. And it doesn't matter about your race, your color, your creed, or your religion. Uh, but guess what? Guess what? Not everyone should come into our country. I know that that's an offensive statement to a lot of people. A lot of people say, well, Ken, that's kind of mean-spirited. I mean, we should let people into the country. Anybody who want to come in, they should be allowed to come in. Well, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. There are certain expectations that people have uh, regarding uh, citizenship. And we talked about some of those particular things last night. Uh, and in fact, when we were talking about pathway to citizenship, I, I want to make it very plain to people. Uh, there are lots of individuals who want to make it uh, seem an infallible process. And it's not perfect. It isn't. It's not perfect in the least bit. But how we interpret immigration law 
judicially has been one of the great pauses for concern uh, in the United States of America. Certainly, the transition from what our founding fathers expected of immigration to what it is today uh, is what many of us are debating about and don't really know. There are those who say that there is no pathway to citizenship. There is a pathway to citizenship. Yes, there is. So the concept that somehow someone's going to be elected to the U.S. Senate, join the Gang of Eight, uh, and then assign a new pathway to citizenship is deplorable on its ends in meetings of that end. The simple fact of the matter is the United States has always had a pathway to citizenship. How it's been interpreted is the problem. There are four things which allow an individual to come into our country and brazenly ask for the sake of citizenship. Number one, they must be in continuous living in this country and based on certain qualifications that we talked about earlier it may be for three years it may be for five years for permanent residency but the simple matter is that you have to first live here now why do you want someone to live in the country before they become a citizen well nothing gained uh, or earned comes easily and certainly not assimilation into the culture of the United States of America. You, you got to really want to be here. And that's what our founding fathers were talking about. We'll go over that in greater detail later on. But our founding fathers wanted people who wanted to be a part of the experiment, the exceptional experiment of the American culture, where e pluribus becomes un, one. So the first thing is, that they have to be continuous living in the United States and before you even apply for naturalization you have to have lived in the place in which you are applying for three consecutive months that means that you can't be jumping from city to city to city to city to city the founding fathers and if you can look at Psalms 1 that might give you some indication of how they saw the concept of immigration was that you were planted in your neighborhood and in your city and that you were being a patriot and a publican. You were being an effective citizen or in practice before you became officially a citizen of the United States of America. Number two, there has to be an attachment to the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution portends that all men are created by God and are free and that the role of government is not to be excessive in providing benefits and things of that particular nature to the whole but in, in fact is limited in its governance and more importantly protects the rights of the citizenry it is not there to become the ATM machine for whatever your needs are Unfortunately, there are many people who have turned that on both sides of the aisle into exactly what the U.S. has become today. Uh, brazen and not affirming the Constitution for its original origin uh, or effects, uh, and simply one that is living and breathing towards uh, a minutia of or evolution towards a socialist uh, regime, regime. Here's number three. You have to have good moral character. And we're going to get into that in great detail in just a few minutes, but any country that assigns those words, three words, good moral character, cannot assign it in and of itself as a government. There has to be a standard far greater than the government to look upon in order to deem what is good and moral about one's character. Mm, the God question 
Remember we were talking about worldview? The God question is going to become a problem. And then finally, I know some people don't want to hear it, but here it goes. You speak English, you read English, you write English. English should not be a second language to you. English has to be the first and primary language, and you'll find out in a few minutes that there are actually exemptions to that, but the Founding Fathers, and even most modern uh, conservatives believe, that citizenship is not something of universal right. It is actually a privilege, a privilege of choice, that you want to be here. And not for what you can get, but for what you can give. So, with that said and that done, I've done the intro for our particular program. Uh, I want to go quickly to a break, and then when I come back from that particular break, I want to get into the immigration message. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Democrat. Right, right. It's going to be a right swipe. This man just shaved his chest hair into a heart. Aww. It's still mine. Right, right swipe. Right swipe. Right swipe. It kind of looks like my sister. It does. Oh, no, she's not. He's cuddling a kitten. Oh, my God, I want to eat their faces. She's, oh, she's hot. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. That's a lollipop. Oh, that is not a lollipop. Left swipe. Left swipe. Ladies and gentlemen, her promises will be kept. She won't remember you. Please make it your resolution this year that you put away smoking uh, and that you return to a moderation on drinking. I, I believe if you do those two things, you would not only be more sober, but more healthy and as well more profitable in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about immigration tonight. And immigration is going to be the third most important issue in 2016's presidential election. Third? You say third, Ken? I say third. Number one will be public safety. Public safety is a sloth uh, of huge reserves uh, in terms of oil private oil. We're not talking government here. And I just want to make it very plain to all of those individuals who are sitting at home uh, typing on Facebook, oh, Obama has cured the economy. No, he hasn't. And in fact, uh, his pretentiousness in using the government as a foil uh, to stir the economy has not only extended the recession of 2008, uh, but has also put us in a situation where our economy will be jeopardized going into 2016. Yes, our economy is slowing down. How do we know the economy is slowing down? Because the Federal Reserve does not want to raise interest rates. 
why do they not want to raise interest rates? Aren't the unemployment numbers successfully falling, Ken? Well, is the economy doing well? In fact, there is a number of pots uh, where the economy is not doing well. And noticeably, the whole concept of the number of people who are signing up for disability and who have dropped out of the employment search, those are definite signs uh, that the economy is not operating to its fullest measure. So the economy will be number two. Number three will be immigration. Yes, whenever you have a very poor economy and whenever there is a concern about public safety, one of the two pay uh, in order to get into this country. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's not a freebie. There, there are people who are thinking, well, all you need to do is get a passport or a visa uh, and then pay for shipping costs and then bam, you're a citizen. No, that's not the... Wow. Uh, let me try this right here. The cost of applying for citizenship in the U.S. of A. Um, it does not come cheaply. It really doesn't. Okay. Um, 